We've just been talking about the restoration work that Mike Tucker's done for the Doctor Experience, and you can catch that video over on the main Doctor Who channel. Uh, but we came to the model unit, we couldn't not talk to Mike about more of his involvement across Doctor Who. So Mike, you've worked on a lot of Doctor Who episodes. Could you could you just list off some of the things you've done, some of the... Well, it's been very varied. I mean, I, I, I built the um, Glitz's spacecraft, the Nosferatu, for, for Dragonfire, but I also built the Big Top for um, Greatest Show in the Galaxy. I did the Insectoid Husk, for Ghost Light, Rose's um, tower block and, and the, the nesting lair from, from 2005 and Big Ben. But we've also done things like the Dalek, um, the Dalek Emperor, and the submarine for Cold War, and the scene where the TARDIS comes smashing through the, mm. the, through the wall and into all the Daleks from the 50th. Your first story was Trial of a Time Lord. That's right. So that is such a big sequence now as well. Like you go back and you look at it and like it looks Fantastic, yeah. like it could stand out today if you put very it Very impressive you. sequence, very deliberately so. The show had just come back yeah. after its 18 month break uh, and Mike Kelp decided that if it comes back, it needs to come back with a bang. Yeah. And so he spent a considerable amount of money on what I think is the first motion control shot yeah. uh, in the show. And it's it's a, an extraordinary shot and a lovely introduction to the classic series. Amazing sequence. Well, talking about coming back with a bang, you also came back in 2005 for series one. What was what was that like coming, coming into the new series? How much of a change was that? Doctor Who in the old series, the classic series, um, we were mostly making spacecraft and monsters. Yeah. And by the very nature of those items, they are going to be effects. The fact that modern Doctor Who is so grounded in present day, mm. uh, and especially in that, that opening season with, with Rose and, and, and Jackie and Mickey, yeah. and therefore the effect sequences are much more akin to what you would get with maybe a, a mainstream drama. The, the factory in Rose is a good example. The, the, the windows blowing out in Rose's tower block Christmas in the Christmas Invasion. invasion. Yeah. We're building models of, of real world objects and, and doing stuff that hopefully your audience isn't spotting, yeah. is an effect. And that's been carrying on right the way up to the work that we did on, on Matt Smith's finale, on, on, on the time of the Doctor. The stuff that we're doing there arguably could have been done full size, but we're trying to sort of seamlessly match in. Whereas something like a Slitheen spacecraft crashing through the clock face of Big Ben, yeah screams effects, you know that it's an effect, there's no other yeah, way it yeah, can be yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. It's a much more sort of um, in your face moment, but I think our best work has been the stuff that possibly has slipped through unnoticed. I love that. So Mike, in 2014, uh, you won a BAFTA Craft Award for Day of the Doctor for the 50th anniversary, and you won this with uh, Milk and Real SFX. Right. What was it like receiving an award uh, for something that you, 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 this amazing time war sequence in Day of the Doctor, what was it like receiving an award for a collaborative, uh, a collaborative piece between you all? Well, it's lovely because from my point of view, I've always maintained that effects at their best are a blend yeah. of all the disciplines, whether that be the live action work that Danny and his team are doing, or the digital work that Milk uh, are doing, or, or the prosthetics work that um, Millennium Effects are doing, or indeed model work. So if you mix all those and, and throw every technique at the audience, you keep the audience guessing as to how the thing's been done. Mm. And I think blending effects techniques is always going to give you a better result than just relying on one technique alone. But the other thing that was lovely was to get a BAFTA for a show that traditionally had been mocked for having slightly ropey special effects. Yeah, yeah. So to be able to stand up there and go, no, this show does deserve yeah, this. Absolutely. Because it's always been at the cutting edge of people trying their hardest to yeah. make the effects work. Absolutely. And they have never ever been anything other than massively ambitious. Danny arguably could have made up a rig to fire the TARDIS through a real wall. Yeah, but yeah massive undertaking to do yeah. that. Milk could indeed have done it CG, but it's a big dynamic effect with bricks and dust and So and much rubbish. interacting yeah. that you want to, yeah. So it, it fell into our lap and I felt that we could do it at quarter scale. So um, we built a quarter scale TARDIS. We, we matched a bit of Michael Pickwood's set at quarter scale, breakaway wall and bricks in it. We got quarter scale Daleks, which we made little quarter scale mutants. Great. And then we literally pulled the TARDIS back on a rail, uh, on an enormous bungee cord rig, and then we, we literally just fired it at the wall. Wow. So what you're getting from that is all that 
fantastic interaction and chaos yeah. that sometimes is best achieved by just letting Actually it happen. doing it, yeah. And we did it two or three times. Amazing, that must have been great. Even just looking at films like Star Wars, Force Awakens, the latest one, they used a lot of, a lot more model work than might be expected. I think what happened is that CG came along and was the bright, shiny new toy, yeah. and everyone felt we must play with the new toy and leave all the old toys back in the box. Yeah. But the old toys are pretty good, and if you can do something miniature or do something full size or do something with a prosthetic, is there a good reason not to do it that way? And I think in the Star Wars film, I think a really good example of that is BB-8. BB-8, the droid, Amazing, yeah. is puppeteered on set. Yeah. I think you can see the way that the actors react. Yeah. I think he becomes a fantastic character. Now there's a lot of CG in there. Mm. They're removing puppeteers mm -hmm. with CG. They're adding a, a CG BB-8 in certain scenes. They're blending techniques mm. again. But you've also got directors like Chris Nolan who are doing things like the Dark Knight trilogy and Inception and Interstellar mm. and the up and coming Dunkirk lot of model work in there. It's alongside the CG. Yeah. You're not abandoning one technique yeah. for the other. You're merging uh, them all together. I always have say just because the iPad has come along, artists haven't stopped working with paper and mm -hmm. pencil and canvas yeah. and brushes. You've just added a new technique new tool, to your yeah. repertoire and that's the way CG should be. It's a fantastic tool. It should be used where it's appropriate. But if there's a point where you go, do you know what? We can do that a different way. Let's do it a different way. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Mike. No problem talking at all. To me. Uh, you, if you haven't seen the video already, uh, we have spoken on the Doctor Who channel about restoring some uh, monsters for Doctor Experience. So go and check that out and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We'll see you soon.